Partial incision or full incision eyelid surgery. I've been using eyelid tape for almost two years. Now my eyes are saggy and the crease is of course not permanent. I've been thinking of doing the surgery for a year and a half now and was thinking to have it done in Korea since they are the best when it comes to eyelid surgery. I was just wondering, is partial incision a good option or because of the sagging of my eyes, is a full incision recommended? Also, silly question, but does it hurt a lot? Thank you for your question. You've submitted two photos and you're stating in your question that you've been using eyelid tape to create an eyelid crease for approximately two years and, or, and you've been thinking about a year and a half of having the eyelid surgery performed and you're anticipating traveling to Korea uh, to have it done and you're asking would a uh, partial incision approach be a, uh, beneficial or a full incision um, and, you're, and the last part of your question you're asking if it will hurt. Well, I can certainly give you my perspective on, on your situation. I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and a fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. Asian eyelid surgery has been a practice focus of mine for over 20 years practicing in Manhattan and Long Island. So I can certainly um, give you some ideas of what I do for patients like yourself when you come for consultation. To begin with, we start by simply making some definitions as to what comprises eyelid crease surgery. When you use something like an eyelid tape, you're usually placing it in a way so that the fold kind of and the crease kind of goes follows the natural um, zone of what would be what would have occurred if nature created this connection. To understand it better, um, the eyelid crease is formed when a part of the muscle called the levator muscle, it's a muscle that lifts your eyelid, has some fibers that go into the skin that define the eyelid crease. When you're putting eyelid tape on top of the uh, eyelid, you're actually pushing the skin inward to help create a similar effect. Um, now that being said, the, the, the approach that I like to do is depending on basically a couple of questions. Is there the presence of extra skin? Is there the presence of fat that could impede uh, the effect of creating a crease? If those, the answer to both those questions are no, then I generally recommend a non-incisional approach. Basically what I'm doing is making little openings in the skin to pass a stitch in a way that connects the levator muscle to the skin. Now if there is a certain amount of extra skin, then a small amount of skin is appropriate to remove. But it's actually more a rule than the exception that for younger people who don't have a lot of skin, and if they don't have fat that's getting in the way, I prefer a non-incisional method. Now there is a partial incisional method and there are more than a few ways to create an eyelid crease. But in the, in, in the end, you're actually measuring, placing marks in an area where you anticipate you want to make sure there is an anchoring of the skin and then allowing the, and then performing the procedure appropriately. Now, in terms of traveling to an, um, an area to have surgery, I'm, as someone who people come from all over the world for, to, for treatment uh, related to eyelid surgery, facelifting surgery, hair loss treatment, I certainly understand um, the desire to travel somewhere to get the best procedure possible. My only concern if you are traveling outside of your immediate area is whether or not you plan on going to Korea for any time within the first six months to a year um, for follow-up. The reason is as follows. When, I, when patients come from outside of this area, and we have patients who've come here from South Africa for revision eyelid surgery, and from China, and from, uh, uh, from, from Europe, from, from all over the world, I always try to um, help them understand 
that there is a potential necessity to come back to New York. Now, being located in New York City, it's actually not unusual for people from anywhere, from the United States as well as outside the United States, to end up in New York City. There's a lot of reasons to come here. So a lot of times it's, it's kind of folded into something where they would be coming in anyway, or it's, it's, it's kind of an excuse to come visit New York. Now, that being said, you know, when people have a procedure done abroad, um, the question of satisfaction with the procedure, potential need for revision, as well as potential for complication has to be addressed. So when you ask those questions before you uh, plan on traveling, then at least you'll have a plan in mind. There's no doubt that a place like Korea, Asian eyelid surgery, is going to be um, performed with significant um, high levels of competency. But even in those situations, there are people who we've seen who needed some type of management or revision. Um, there's always a certain, no matter how much you do of anything, the field of plastic or cosmetic surgery, revision surgeries and complications always have to be something you're ready for. So with that understanding, I think you should have some consultations to get an understanding of whether or not there's extra skin, whether there's fat, and what the options would be in those scenarios as well. In the absence of performing a physical exam, that's not a question that can be answered without really examining the, t the, the way the eyelid uh, behaves. And so um, that's why I'm recommending consultation. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.